Hey YouTube, David here. So today I'm filming the New Year's book tag. I was actually tagged by Steve Donahue. So if by some chance you haven't seen his channel, but have seen my tiny channel, check his out. Um, let's jump right in. First question, how many books am I planning on reading in 2020? So last year, um, I set my goal for reading one book a week or 52 books in the year. And what I would like to do is keep that goal the same, but keep my reading more consistent throughout the year. Um, in 2019, I actually had two months I read zero books and another four months I read two or less, uh, which ended up making me play catch up at the end of the year. I actually pushed through 17 books in December. Um, I feel like if I kept up a consistent habit, I could read more than 52 books a year, but I'd rather set the bar a little bit lower, something easier to accomplish to really uh, drive home the habit and consistency before I end up moving that up. Second, name five books I did not get to read in 2019, but I want to make a priority in 2020. So first off, um, I have Hacking Darwin by Jamie Metzl. And this is obviously a book on genetic engineering. So in my previous videos, you saw that I read Juvenescence, uh, which is kind of like an investing look on modern technologies related to aging, and it covers a lot of genetics in here. But as well as you saw that I read The, Ge the Gene by Siddhartha Mukherjee, as well as Biohackers here. So with the prior three books I read, um, what I was trying to do is starting off with the gene, um, creating like a baseline of knowledge about genetics in general, moving into biohackers, um, which was kind of the politics on if we should even be doing genetic engineering or not, and then juvenescence, where the technologies are at currently regarding making genetic modifications. So with Hacking Darwin here, um, what I'm hoping is this is going to flesh out my knowledge on the moral arena that genetic engineering is being batted around. And I hope it's a little bit more nuanced. Um, the reason being, biohackers touched on a lot of like genetic engineering, but it was very much in the vein of that it can't be avoided and you shouldn't try to stop it, um, at least in my opinion. So hopefully this book will help flesh out that realm for me. Next we have Mastering Adulthood by Laura E. Fielding. And um, this is a book my girlfriend actually got me for the holidays and I'm still trying to figure out if it's an insult or not. Um, but what it, flipping through the book, it actually looks more like a self-help book with actionable advice. So I'm actually kind of excited to read through it. It looks like it covers a lot of different topics from improving your intention span to meditation and mindfulness um, to habit setting. And it looks like it could be a beneficial read. Third, we have The Future of Capitalism by Paul Collier. Now, um, this book I originally picked up, I believe, as a recommendation from Bill Gates. Um, so this book is kind of a critique on where capitalism is leading us, um, specifically in respect to the division and polarization it's causing um, in various communities, corporations, as well as the ethics um, that are operating under capitalism. Um, I did read the Communist Manifesto at the end of last year, so I'm looking to read a few more critiques of capitalism and then to further my knowledge on that topic, read some pro-capitalist texts coming up in um, 2020 as well. Then we're going to follow up our critique of capitalism with Principles by Ray Dalio. Now, this is a business book um, that I'm hoping will help me become a better capitalist myself. Um, it is a beautiful book. It's well laid out. It's got graphics, large type. It looks like it's really, really well formatted and uh, what have you. And it goes in depth on everything from starting a business from the ground up, getting the right people on board, creating company cultures, um, sales tactics, management, um, even like certain life principles for yourself. Um, so it covers a huge range and it's over 500 pages. So I'm hoping I can pull a lot out of this to become a better business person myself. Fifth book, we have Lifespan by David Sinclair. Now this is a book I was really looking forward to at the end of 2019. David Sinclair is a professor of genetics at Harvard. There's a trend there. But um, what I really like about him is he's a professor, or a scientist rather, that talks directly to the general population. He doesn't just research, or the, the, the. he doesn't just put out research papers and then let other people decipher them and then you end up 
getting the news third or fourth run down reinterpret it. He lets you know what he's working on, why he thinks is important, and giving you that information directly. And what's especially interesting about this book here is he is putting forward a new information theory of aging. Um, to describe it very quickly, it's almost like your genetics are a like a DVD and scratches accumulate over time, hurting the efficacy of that. Um, so I'm doing that as part of a series that I'm going to be filming later on, but I've been looking forward to that book for a while now. I finally have it picked up and I'm waiting on the audiobook to come in from my library so I can flip between the different mediums and hopefully push through that very fast. Um, yeah, that's what I'm really looking forward to. Third, what genre am I looking to read more of? Um, <laughs> So pretty much everything is new to me at the moment. So it's not like I have a home genre that I operate in right now that I want to move away from and try new territories. Um, more rather, nonfiction is my base, but it's only my base because it's what I'm most interested in, not what I'm most comfortable with. Um, maybe over the course of 2020, I should taste test a few YA books, fantasy, um, what have you but I'm not going to attribute a number to that. If they fit in my schedule between the other videos I'm planning on making, then more power to them, but I'm not going to go out of my way to find them. Four, name three non-book goals I'm looking to accomplish in 2020. So the first of which is something Steve actually touched on in his video, and that's improving my short attention span. Um, so I'm not quite a Gen Z like he was picking on, but I am a millennial, and I did grow up with um, cell phones um, at the ready. 24 seven. So hopefully I can establish a good meditation habit, uh, reel in that short bird brain attention span and hopefully utilize that in many aspects of my life, but also improve my concentration with reading as well. Second, I have a personal goal for work. Um, it's a sales goal that I'd rather keep disclosed. And for the third non-book related goal, it's kind of book related, it's book tube related. Um, I would like to grow this channel a little bit more. I've been seeing a little bit of success, especially in this past two weeks. Now that I've actually been more active on the community and not just posting once every six months. But I would love to expand the reach, get in contact with more like minds and really just develop the community around it. So, yeah. All right, question five. Um, so this is something that I almost didn't answer and used a cop out for. But looking around and thinking about it a little harder, I do have one applicable answer. So question five is what book, wait, what's a book you've had forever that you still need to read? So digging around, I think I might have found the only unread book I had prior to 2019. And that's actually Prince of Fools by Mark Lawrence. Um, so I actually don't know what uh, genre this falls under, whether it's YA or fantasy or what have you. But the reason this fits is in middle school, the only three books I really read, period, were the Broken Empire series by Mark Lawrence, and I love them. I think I read them all three times or four times each. Um, and I liked them a lot and ended up picking up the next book in a different series, um, Prince of Fools. However, I believe I started reading it, and I think I was looking for more of what this series provided, and it was written differently, uh, not as much of a forward protagonist, so I put it back down. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get this, get to this this year, to be completely honest, but it's my only applicable book uh, for the question. Question six, one word that I want 2020 to be. If I had to pick just one word, it would probably be growth, and I mean that interpreted a few different ways. So personally, I'd like to grow more myself in regards to certain areas of knowledge. Um, I would like to grow this channel. I would like to grow as a business person and grow my business. Um, so I don't know if this is a cop out because I'm using the one word to imply four different things. But yeah, um, I'd like to grow in multiple aspects of my life. And then that brings us to the final question, which is who I'm going to tag to do this video as well. And uh, funnily enough, um, I was at home drafting a script for a 2020 reading resolutions video when I saw a notification that I was tagged by Steve Donahue in, in this video here. 
Um, one of the first things that I wrote down was actually becoming more active in the community, and I'll be damned if Steve didn't make that a lot easier for me. So off the bat, I've only been really participating in the booktube community proper for about two weeks, and it's already reaching out to me. I don't really feel like I need to reach out just because it's such an open-armed community, just kind of allowing me in. And I've already noticed like a ton of support from new channels, from the newbie tags, and I really do appreciate that. So what I would like to do passing this tag forward is a few smaller channels that have interacted with me from the start, as well as kind of one broad tag that I hope can um, give some other people an opportunity to make some videos themselves. So starting out, we have Chris Baldwin, Reading Between the Lines, Alan, and I'm not going to pronounce your last name because I'm going to ruin it. You need to teach me that. Um, and then D Jungle T. In addition, I would like to tag the subreddit for BookTube itself. So that's r slash BookTube or slash r slash BookTube. But I posted some of my first few videos there. They gave me a lot of views, a lot of critiques, and I think really helped me out in the beginning. Um, and I'd like to see that area more active and give everyone there an opportunity to make their own version of this and hopefully make that little subgenre or rather subgroup of this community a little bit more vibrant in itself. So, yeah.